the perfect way to start game dev. Figure out your hook. Figure out your hook. The Trinity hook is simply, we have to pick an engine. So I'll go ahead and give you all the options for your game engines. Put into what's called a GDD, which is a game design bible. The game design document. What's called a GDD. It doesn't matter if it's a text document and call it your GDD. So in your GDD, put it in your GDD. You need to pick a game engine. Your first game should be crap. Now let's talk about pricing, the pricing of the actual engine. Your first project should be a clone project. You want to get your first game over with because your first game is going to be crap. If you're looking to just start out, then I would try all three of them. You should get it out of the way, get it done, so that you can check it off your list and say, I made my first game. Well, maybe everything out there is not perfect advice. So let's start by removing the garbage. Let's start with pick an engine. It doesn't matter. Actually, it does matter. If you're deciding between Unreal, Godot, and Unity, well, Let's start with Unreal. Unreal is a great engine, but it's really complex and the learning curve is really steep. Combine that with learning C++, which is much more difficult than say C Sharp for Unity. It's just not the best option if you're the absolute beginner. And then you have Godot, which a lot of people are praising right now. And I'm sure it's a good engine too. It just has not been around long enough to have the amount of resources like Unreal or Unity out there for you. So if you're the absolute beginner and you want the easiest way to start, then you should pick Unity. Unity is not only much easier to navigate around than Unreal, but you use C Sharp, which is a much easier language to learn than C++. Along with picking your engine, I would stick with actually learning the language that is with your engine. I would avoid visual scripting, at least for the time being. The reason for this is when you learn how to actually program with languages, with computer languages, your brain starts to think differently. You kind of rewire your brain. And you don't, you don't get the same results or the same rewiring when you start with visual scripting. So a little bit of suffering and a little bit of learning in the beginning of coding will help you in the long run because later on, you can do a combination, a hybrid approach of visual scripting and coding. And it will be much easier because you'll have a better understanding of how to actually think and code in the language. The next thing you hear a lot is your first game is going to suck. Yes, that's true, most likely, but that's not why you're supposed to make your first game. You don't make your game because it's going to suck or to get it over with. You make your first game to gain the experience, to actually accomplish something. Your first game is not there to just get it over with, it's to actually gain the experience and to go from nothing to actually creating something, not knowing anything before. I think a lot of devs focus on that, it's gonna suck so you just need to get it over with, but that's not the case. You don't need to get over with, you just need to do it. Your first game sucking is actually irrelevant to making your first game. It has no bearing on why you should make your first game. You should make your first game because you need to make your first game. You learn the most by completing projects. Your first game could be one of your better projects. Does that mean you shouldn't make it because it didn't suck? No, it doesn't. You make your first game to gain the experience. So another thing you'll hear is to analyze your favorite games to learn what works. But this is actually just another step that you don't need to take yet. Why? Because you know how video games work at least enough to make a game, to start making games. I know this because you want to make a video game, and I can guarantee you if you want to make a video game, you have played other games. Later down the line when you become more advanced, yeah, then you can start focusing on how actual inputs work, what the backgrounds were, what the color theory was, what mechanics did what, what the button uh, arrangements were. But starting out, you don't need to focus on any of that. You know the basic concept of how games work and that's all you need. So you don't need to go and look at games that you like or enjoy or and learn from that. Ever since the whole Unity debacle, I've been hearing a lot of other devs talk about how you need to focus on the game engine pricing structure or at least look at the game engine pricing structure. But that just is irrelevant. That just doesn't matter. One reason it doesn't matter is because if you're just starting out, selling your game is way, way ahead of you. And you don't have to worry about that yet. You need to first learn how to make a game before you can sell a game, right? Another reason is whether it's $0 because it's open source or 3.5% or 5%, it doesn't really matter that much in the long run because you're gonna be a small studio or a solo dev, and as long as you can make a successful game that's profitable, whether it's 3.5% or 5%, you're gonna be happy regardless. 
don't let the pricing structure of the engine sway you from one engine to the other. It's more important to actually learn how to make games than to worry if you're going to profit from a game that you might never make in the future. So something that certain devs out there really like to focus on is the hook. The hook, the hook, the hook, right? And yeah, I guess at some point in your development journey, the hook is important, but probably not for like your 10th game until probably actually try to release a Steam game then your hook probably matters. But starting out, the hook doesn't matter. Pretty much every game out there is just a copy of another game with a slight twist to it. Every single game out there is pretty much a copy. Once in a while, there's an original title. Typically, those are not made by solo devs, though. Those are typically made by small teams, if not large teams. What you need to focus on is not the hook, is taking games that exist, replicating what they have done, and tweaking it a little bit and learning how they did it analyzing what they did what already worked and then making it your own that's far more important than focusing days hours weeks on a hook it's far more important than that you're gonna waste weeks trying to figure out the best hook for your game when you actually go to make your game you can't make it because it's far out of your skill level or the scope is just way too large so it's better to not worry about what your game is or not worry about the hook for your game and actually just start making games. When it comes to the hook, I really think this is really bad advice that some people are giving out there. And these are devs who are actually successful in the industry, who have released multiple titles. I don't know if it's they're trying to create video content or just get views or what or sound like they know more than they do or aren't actually thinking about what they're saying, but they're giving bad advice. They're not actually teaching you, showing you how to create games. And the hook is a perfect example of that. You need to learn how to make games and actually and understand how to make games before you can focus on a hook. Everyone has a great idea that they grew up thinking about their ultimate game, their dream game, right? Everyone has a dream game, which is a hook in itself. But do you know how to make it? No, you don't. You don't know how to make it. Until you know how to make a game, your hook is irrelevant. So stop worrying about the hook. Learn how to make games first, and then focus on the hook. Another thing that you hear a lot that I actually thought was a good idea originally, but the more I thought about it is the more useless I think it is starting out. And it's a game design document, or GDD. Large projects game design documents are great to keep everything organized, to make sure you're staying on track, on theme, on style. That's great. But as a solo dev, you can build basically any project that takes anything less than a year you probably don't need a game design document for you don't you don't need to flush out every idea every aspect of the game and worry about that because you're going to waste too much time developing the game design document and not enough time developing your game trust me you don't need a game design document maybe if you're working on an actual commercial release or you're working on a game that's larger than a year, takes longer than a year in scope, then sure, make a game design document, but first prototype to make sure to see if it's actually a viable idea. So how do you actually make a game? Well, it's actually just three simple steps. You can forget about all that garbage and you can focus on these simple things and just repeat it. The first one is pick Unity. And like I said earlier, Unity is the best option. It's the easiest to learn, it has the most resources and documentation and tutorials out there. It's just the best option, especially if you're just starting out. Unity can do 2D and 3D, so you don't have to worry about, well, if you're not sure which one you need to do or not, it can do it all. Along with picking Unity, I would learn C Sharp over visual scripting. That just goes with it. You'll be better off in the long run if you actually learn how to code. Step two is find a tutorial that you can complete in a week and complete it in a week. Just do it, just do the tutorial. You might not like it, you might not enjoy it, but find a tutorial on Unity that you can complete a full game in one week. And step three is publish the game. Go to itch.io and publish it. Make it a little bit your own and publish it. And then all you have to do is repeat the process. Stick with Unity, find another tutorial, create it and publish it. I would do that every single week for your first month. So by the end of your first month, you should have four games published. And then on your second month, I would focus on one game that it takes the entire month to make. So now it's a four week long game. Pick Unity, work on your game, 
publish it, and repeat, and do this for an entire year. By your sixth month, maybe do a three month game. Maybe by your third month, do a three month game. It's the consistency that will be more important than anyone's advice out there. Why the structure is good and why the structure is the best way to start game dev. Because you cut out all the garbage and you focus on what's important. And that's creating games. Once you learn how to actually create games, then you can focus on color theory, story, certain genres. And here's a bonus tip. Stick with either 2D or 3D. Don't switch back and forth. If you're unsure which one you want to do, your first two games, one I would do 3D and the other one I would do 2D. And then I would decide which one you'd rather do. And why Unity is another great option for this is because you can do a 2D game in Unity and learn the basics of how Unity works. And then you can do a 3D game in Unity. And everything's pretty much the same, at least navigating around the engine, and you don't have to learn an entire new engine. But the most important part of this is picking one 2D or 3D and sticking with it. Don't switch back and forth because there are slight differences where you're gonna not like, or you're not gonna like jumping back and forth. So what are the key takeaways of this? Action is key. Stop worrying about planning and all the ideas out there and all the, if you're doing a step wrong or not, and just do it. Just make your games. The second one is, Focus on finishing. Publish your games. You learn so much by actually publishing a game and letting people play it, getting feedback. It's extremely important. Ignore the noise. Forget about how to market your game right now. Forget about how to plan your game. Forget about game design documents, pricing structures, what you should price your game at, what your audience is. You have to learn to make a game before you can sell a game. So learn to make your games. Spend the next year learning how to make a game and then you can focus on selling a game. And the final key takeaway is, your first game is going to suck. Yeah, probably, it probably will suck. But that's not the point. The point is making your first game, getting your foot in the door, getting started, getting a win, completing a game. That's what's important, not whether it's good or bad. So if you like this video and you actually wanna learn more about game dev or you wanna have a community behind you, I have a free community that you can join called 10th Legion Games that has tutorials, marketing strategies, a supportive community, and it's focused on learning game dev. It cuts out all the garbage and it's focused on what's important, learning game dev. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time, thanks.